Hi everybody, it's Jenny from Norman S. Wright. Last week we talked about the air handler, so it's time for the air to leave the air handler and go into the ductwork. So let's do some ductwork basics today. Let's get started. In HVAC systems, we use fans to create pressure that moves the air through the ductwork. The pressure created by the fan needs to be able to push the airflow all the way through the ductwork, through the grills or diffusers, and into the occupied space. If you're always looking up at an HVAC system, like I do, then you may have noticed that the size of the ductwork throughout the system gets smaller and smaller until the air is distributed into the space. The fundamental principle behind this is Bernoulli's principle. At its simplest, Bernoulli's principle says that for a fluid, when the velocity increases, the static pressure decreases. And if the velocity decreases, the static pressure increases. It's really the basis of much of the HVAC system. You can see that in the pressure equation, velocity pressure plus static pressure equals total pressure. For any given total pressure, if the velocity increases, the velocity pressure will increase, and the static pressure will have to decrease to keep the same total pressure. So if we had a piece of ductwork, and let's say it has one inch total pressure, and that is made up of 0.4 inches velocity pressure and 0.6 inches static pressure. Then let's reduce it to a smaller diameter ductwork. But because the air is moving through a smaller ductwork, it speeds up, so maybe now your velocity pressure is 0.6 inches and your static pressure is 0.4 inches. Or if the airflow is moving the other direction, then you increase the size of the ductwork. Now your velocity slows down, so your velocity pressure goes down and your static pressure goes up. And this is called static regain. Again, I assume no friction in this example, but obviously that's not how it works in real life. So let's make some room and look at this. There are three ways to design ductwork, equal friction, static regain, and constant velocity. In the US, we usually use equal friction. I'll save the details about how these methods work in a, for a future video, but let's look at this. When we design a duct system, we want to minimize energy usage, material, and installation time. Energy usage is a function of pressure loss. The higher the pressure loss, the bigger the fan and motor horsepower that will be needed to get the airflow through the system and out to the furthest zone. So this means more energy used in the system. From a material standpoint, most of a building's ductwork is sheet metal, only switching to flex duct to connect to the diffusers. So ideally, you want to minimize your duct size to use as little sheet metal as possible. However, there is a trade-off between duct size and pressure loss that we'll talk about in a minute. The last consideration is installation time. Lots of elbows, tees, and transitions can increase installation time, but often can't be avoided. Elbows and tees also increase the pressure loss in the system, so they'll affect the energy usage as well. So let's make a little room and look at pressure loss of different ductwork. The type of ductwork, size, and shape all affect pressure differently. For instance, the rougher the ductwork is, the more friction loss it'll have. So unlined ductwork will be less rough and therefore or have lower friction losses than fiberglass line ductwork or flex duct. As far as shape goes, round ductwork will have less pressure loss than rectangular ductwork because there's less surface area exposed to the airflow. For instance, if we had a 12 inch round duct, it'll have an area of pi times r squared. And so that is pi times six squared, which is 113 square inches. The surface area is 2 pi r, so if we do the math here, that's 37.7 inches. Where a 9 by 12 ductwork would be about the same area of 108 square inches, but its surface area, or its perimeter, is going to be 42 inches. So the closer to round, the lower the loss. The velocity of the air as it passes through the ductwork affects pressure drop as well. We can calculate the velocity and therefore pressure loss for 2,000 CFM in this 12-inch round duct. So if you remember from earlier videos, 
Q equals area times velocity. So velocity is CFM divided by area. So that's 2,000 divided by 113 square inches and divide that by 144 to convert that to feet. And we have a velocity of 2546 feet per minute. Velocity pressure equals velocity divided by 4,005 squared. So that comes up to 2546 divided by 4,005 squared. And that equals 0.4 inches. Now let's do the same for the rectangular ductwork. We have velocity equals 2,000 divided by 108 divided by 144 is 2,666 feet per minute. And then the velocity pressure is 2,666 feet per minute divided by 4,005 and square all that. And you get 0.44 inches for the rectangular ductwork. OK, so let's make a little bit of room again. You also have to consider the material and installation cost. Spiral duct may be less expensive and requires less sealing, so it may be a better option all around in this example. But what if you're comparing 24-inch spiral duct to a rectangular duct? In this case, you may not have the ceiling height to install 24-inch spiral, and a wide but less tall rectangular duct or a flat oval might be your best option. Inlet and outlet transitions will affect pressure loss as well. The more gradual the transition, the lower the pressure loss. If you had a transition that looks like this, the airflow would move through it kind of like this, and the sudden change in duct size would cause turbulence at these corners. So this transition has a lower pressure drop than a sudden change in ductwork, and then this transition would even be better. I'm going to need to make more room to finish this. Bends in the ductwork will also affect pressure duct. The harder the bend, the higher the pressure loss. A hard 90 degree bend would have airflow like this. Again, you could get turbulence in the corners. The softer bend would be better, and an even softer bend would be even better. That's why you see turning veins in 90 degree bends sometimes. They guide the airflow around the corner and reduce turbulence, which reduces the pressure loss. But a nice, soft 90 degree bend would be ideal. And here's another example of a poor, better, and best option. Same thing would happen if you have T's in the ductwork. So making your T's softer or using turning veins would help here too. So you'll have to look at your application and try to balance cost with pressure losses. The different pressure losses fall into two categories, frictional losses caused by the air moving through the ductwork, and dynamic losses caused by the disturbance to the air from changes in direction or area. So that's an overview on ductwork and how it affects pressure in your HVAC system. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and thanks for watching.